Imagine your brain as a bustling city, with neurons as skyscrapers and synapses as busy intersections, and hidden beneath it all is a network of tiny cylindrical highways called microtubules. Could these nanoscopic structures be doing more than just scaffolding? According to the Orkor theory orchestrated objective reduction proposed by Roger Penrose and Stuart Hameroff, microtubules might host quantum processes that spark consciousness itself. How could quantum effects survive in the wet, warm chaos of a brain? Or, or suggest that tubulin proteins inside microtubules can occupy superposed states, tiny quantum vibrations that remain coherent long enough to influence neuronal firing. Question, isn't decoherence inevitable in biology? The theory answers that the ordered water shells and the lattice structure within microtubules could shield these vibrations, extending coherence from femtoseconds toward milliseconds, just enough to orchestrate neural objective reductions tied to conscious moments. What evidence supports this bold claim? Hameroff's team has measured electrical oscillations in microtubules and found fast rhythms that some argue exceed what classical models predict. They point to experiments where an anesthetic molecules known to switch off consciousness bind preferentially to tubulin sites, suggesting a quantum-sensitive mechanism. Yet skeptics ask, are these effects truly quantum or simply classical biochemistry in disguise? A dispute drives fresh lab tests. How can we test orc ore in the lab? Researchers are cooling isolated microtubule samples to ultra-low temperatures and probing them with ultra-fast lasers or nuclear magnetic resonance to catch coherent oscillations. Others use engineered neurons lacking microtubule integrity to see if consciousness functions, like gamma wave synchrony, alter. If disrupting tubulin quantum states consistently dulls awareness markers, it would be a game changer. Why does this matter? If quantum computations in microtubules do contribute to consciousness, it would reinvent neuroscience, linking mind to the fabric of reality's deepest laws. And it could inspire entirely new quantum biological technologies, from ultra-sensitive sensors to brain-like quantum computers. Whether Orchor stands or falls, exploring microtubules at the quantum frontier pushes us to rethink where physics ends and consciousness begins. The orchestrated objective reduction Orc or Pozo, proposed by physicist Roger Penrose and anesthesiologist Stuart Hameroff, suggests that consciousness arises from quantum processes inside neurons, specifically within microtubules. Unlike classical models of brain activity, which rely on electrical and chemical signaling, Orc or posits that coherent quantum states in cytoskeletal structures orchestrate conscious awareness. These quantum events are said to undergo objective reduction, a form of wave function collapse tied to fundamental space-time geometry. The orchestration comes from biological control over these quantum collapses, aligning them with cognition. If true, this theory would redefine consciousness as an emergent quantum property of matter. According to Orkor, decision-making and awareness arise from quantum computations and microtubules that collapse into definite outcomes. It's like your thoughts are not just electric pulses, but shimmering quantum ripples collapsing into meaningful moments. Microtubules are cylindrical protein polymers that form part of the cell's cytoskeleton, providing structure and aiding in transport within neurons. They are composed of tubulin dimers arranged in helical lattices, which some argue may support quantum coherence. Unlike synaptic transmission, which is noisy and classical, microtubules operate inside neurons with regular geometric precision, offering a potential substrate for quantum information. Their periodic structure and hollow core have led some to compare them to quantum waveguides. This structural order is why they were proposed as candidates for subneuronal information processing. Microtubules help position organelles in neurons and guide molecular motors like kinesin, but Ortor suggests they also process quantum information. It's like discovering that a building's support beams also secretly conduct thoughts. Quantum coherence, the persistence of entangled or superposed states, is typically fragile, especially in warm, wet, noisy biological systems like the brain. Critics of Orkor argue that decoherence would destroy any quantum state in microtubules almost instantly. 
However, evidence from quantum biology, e.g. photosynthesis in plants, bird magnetoreception, and olfaction shows that some biological systems maintain quantum coherence at body temperature. Proponents suggest that microtubules may possess protective features or utilize topological shielding to preserve coherence. While still speculative, this parallels growing evidence that quantum effects can survive in biology. In photosynthetic bacteria, excitons move coherently through protein complexes, boosting energy transfer efficiency beyond classical limits. It's like finding whispers of quantum music in the roar of biological noise. Penrose's contribution to ORCOR is the idea of objective reduction. ORC a non-computational spontaneous collapse of quantum superposition based on gravitational curvature in space-time. Unlike standard quantum decoherence caused by environmental interaction or is intrinsic and tied to the structure of the universe, Orc Orr claims that these collapses occur in microtubules and their frequency aligns with cycles of conscious perception, e.g. 40 hertz gamma synchrony. The threshold for collapse depends on the mass energy separation between superposed states. This gives consciousness a non-algorithmic physics-rooted foundation, potentially beyond AI replication. Orkro predicts that each conscious moment arises from a quantum state collapse roughly every 25 milliseconds. It's like consciousness is a strobe light blinking every time quantum space-time snaps into certainty. Hameroff and others have cited studies showing anesthetics affect microtubule dynamics and consciousness together, hinting at a functional link. Research has shown that microtubules have electrical properties and may resonate at gigahertz frequencies, potentially enabling fast information processing. Still, no direct observation of quantum coherence or entanglement in brain microtubules has been achieved. Many neuroscientists criticize Orchor as speculative and unfalsifiable, while others call for more precise quantum-level imaging of cytoskeletal dynamics. The field remains divided between mainstream skepticism and growing interdisciplinary interest. Some anesthetics bind to hydrophobic pockets in tubulin, possibly disrupting quantum coherence and thereby switching off consciousness. It's like a sleeping spell that works by scrambling the quantum strings holding your awareness together. Ha. <laughs> Traditional neuroscience attributes consciousness to emergent properties of neural networks, specifically to synaptic integration, action potentials, and distributed electrical oscillations. These models emphasize information processing across large neuron assemblies without invoking quantum mechanics. However, classical models face difficulty explaining phenomena like unity of consciousness, the binding problem, and subjective experience, qualia. Orcher offers an alternative by suggesting consciousness is rooted in fundamental physics, not just computation. The debate reflects a deeper divide between reductive neuroscience and foundational physics. The global workspace theory models consciousness as an integration of neural activity across the cortex, with no role for quantum collapse. It's like one camp says thoughts are circuits, the other says they're quantum sparks within the machine. If Orker is correct, consciousness cannot be replicated by classical computation alone. It requires non-computable quantum processes tied to space-time geometry. This would suggest a fundamental limit to machine consciousness based on current silicon architectures. Quantum computers might emulate some Orker mechanisms, but unless they connect to space-time curvature, speculative leap, they would remain unconscious simulations. Orchware thus provides a testable boundary between strong AI and true subjective experience. If falsified, it also opens the door to new post-classical computing paradigms for consciousness emulation. Current large language models can mimic conversation, but by Orchware standards, they are philosophical zombies with no awareness. It's like building a robot actor that can perfectly play a human, but never actually feel the role. Several proposals exist to test Orchor, including using quantum interference setups in synthetic microtubules, monitoring entanglement in biological tissue, and observing effects of altered gravitational fields on consciousness. Advances in quantum brain imaging, nanophotonics, 
and room temperature quantum sensors may soon make these tests feasible. Collaboration between quantum physicists and neuroscientists is essential to develop falsifiable, high representative experiments. Even if ORCOR is not confirmed, its exploration may yield novel insights into both quantum mechanics and mural architecture. New technologies may emerge from attempts to test or simulate its predictions. One proposed experiment involves using quantum entangled photons to detect if tubulin proteins can maintain entanglement over time. It's like aiming a quantum flashlight into the deepest folds of the mind to see what glows back. Urkoer remains one of the boldest theories linking quantum physics and consciousness, offering an explanation grounded in both biology and space-time geometry. While unproven and controversial, it has spurred rich interdisciplinary dialogue and open conceptual space for experimental quantum neurobiology. Whether it stands or falls, it forces us to ask deeper questions. Is consciousness computational, biological, or fundamental? Are we minds made of neurons or space-time collapses sculpted by quantum logic? Orkor might not be the final theory, but it could be the beginning of a new way to frame the mystery of awareness. Even critics of Orkor acknowledge its role in stimulating serious scientific inquiry into consciousness beyond pure neurobiology. It's like a hypothesis that points beyond the map not to declare truth, but to show that the frontier is far from settled.